Now, uh, for the latest news from the City of London, uh, bankers are apparently popping bottles of Bollinger uh, if they've managed to come into work today because the cap on their bonus is apparently going to be scrapped from the end of the month. I actually think that it should be scrapped. And I'm now joined by former Chief Executive of the British Bankers Association, Angela Knight. We'll find out what she makes of it. Angela, very good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to the new, improved uh, Independent Republic of Mike Graham, uh, our new home, which we're very happy with. Um, I think bankers' bonuses is not the purview of anybody other than the banks that employ the bankers, is it? No, you're, you're right there. Yeah. That is where it sits. Yeah. It sits with the, bank, with the bank itself. It sits yeah. with the board of the bank yeah. and their remuneration committee, and they've got to have the ability to pay when they want to pay and take away yeah. as well. Right. What, what is called clawback, malice and clawback mm. these days, is a set of requirements which says to the board of the bank, well, if they didn't do very well, even though it may be a previous year, you can get that money back right. off them. And Does that actually happen? Yes, it does. It yeah. has started to happen now. Right. It didn't a few years ago, right. but now it really does. I wish we does. could do that in the public sector, because I was saying to Jeremy Carl this <laughs> morning, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all very well when you look at people like chief executives of councils who get paid sort of half a million quid a year, and they always say, oh, well, we have to employ the best people. We have to pay commensurately with the private sector. But they never really seem to have any performance criteria whether they've done the job well or not. And that's a very valid point, mm. because it's you've got to get your performance criteria right. Yeah. Pay when it meets that performance and not when it doesn't. Right. And as I say, being able to sort of retrospectively say, hang on, we're not going to pay you that, right. is a very good thing. And what it does, as far as the individual and the bank is concerned, is when you have a good year, you can pay it, mm. and when you haven't had a good year, you don't pay it. Yes. Whereas if it mostly goes into fixed salary, as you say, it gets paid regardless. Mm. The problem with bankers' bonuses is that it became totemic, and still to this day is totemic, yeah. that, you know, the sort of view on the street is it's always a banker's fault, they're paid too much right. and they shouldn't have a bonus. Yeah. And one of the interesting things that has happened about, you know, the narrative behind making this change is it hasn't come from a politician, it hasn't come from a lobbying group, right. it's actually the regulators themselves right. who said, look, what it was intended to do, that cap, it hasn't done it, mm. we are out of step, globally, and we are a global financial centre, whatever one mm. might like to say, this is still the biggest or one of the biggest global financial centres and arguably the most international. So actually, the huge mobility that goes on, people coming here for three, mm. four years, going elsewhere and vice versa, means that we do need to be in step on pay and quite a few other things right. as well. So are you saying that, that Britain, uh, being outside mm. of the banker's bonus at the moment, saying that bankers can't have Oh, bankers do have a cap. It's that's fixed. not what everybody else is doing. No, that's right. I mean, a lot of people signed up to it and not many people implemented it. Right. There's a whole load of things. Not many people. I think we're the only country who ring-fenced the retail bank right. saying that's the way to protect it. It wasn't. Right. But, you know, this out of step is has, tricky. Because the banking sector's changed irrevocably, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, my, my sister worked in the sort of Wall Street city-type companies for, mm. for, for decades, and so I know a bit about it just from talking to her and seeing the yeah. kind of things that, that used to happen. Um, and, and, you know, some might say, thank God they don't happen anymore. Um, but it seems to me that they were a lot more successful uh, back in, the, in, in those days. Banks seem to have now become these kind of, uh, uh, sort of cathedrals to the woke, uh, where they'd rather tell you what your carbon footprint is uh, than lend you some money at a reasonable rate. Well, you have to, tell, you have to do all this business about carbon footprint. There's do you? Uh, yes. There's diverse, Why? Uh, there is regulatory you know, framework that sits around, and part of that regulatory yeah. framework includes uh, diversity, inclusion, and it also includes something about... So is this government-inspired or is it regulatory-inspired? Mixture. Mixture. It comes... Well, there, there is, as you know, there's a governmental push. And actually, I shouldn't really say that. There's a big political push. Yeah. Because we, like many other countries, are signed up to uh, a goal which is all about net zero. Right. Uh, and then... Which is a load of old cobblers, in my view. Yes, it might be. But I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to agree with you on well, that. Well, we can disagree what, on many things. But what I would say is that that is fine to right. sign up to a target. Mm. But if you're going to do that, you've got to have a clear and sensible yeah. plan. Well, and part of that plan has got to be allowing the banking sector absolutely. to finance not just new energy, yeah. but also existing energy. So you can have your lights mm. on in here. No, listen, I mean, my, my view of all of this is that I'm more than happy to buy an electric car. I'm more than happy to get a heat pump. I'm more than happy to say that if we get to net zero, we will save the planet. If anybody can tell me that that will definitely help. But nobody can. Every time I ask them, they come and got an answer. And also, if it was cheaper, if it was better, if it was more efficient, and if it made the business of 
business actually more efficient, then I'd be all for it. But it gets in the way. I mean, look at um, the, the, the chair of NatWest who just recently departed these shores, yeah. um, Dame Allison. You know, she's going to be remembered for putting in sustainable carpets yes. in every NatWest branch. What she's also going to be remembered for uh, is screwing up the bank's policies on making money and being obsessed with diversity. So what I, what I, what I, where I do agree with you and where I don't is this. First of all, I do agree with you that the going beyond what is reasonable, yeah. forget it. Right. I'm not in favour of that. I'm not in favour of doing nothing right. either. I'm, 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 I'm a pragmatist. Mm. I just sit in the middle, which sounds makes yeah. me terribly boring. And, and that is, you know, do we need to be a little bit more... Uh, aware of our, the world we live in, yeah. environmentally aware, sustainably aware. Of course we do. Do we need to make sure that we have women, we have uh, others in jobs, we, you know, we look at ethnicity in a proper way? So some of those real barriers that were there when I was uh, young and just mm. starting out in, in, in the commercial world are no longer there. But what we shouldn't do is go over the top. Exactly. And we have a tendency to go over the top. We are operating, banking industry, financial services industry, operates within a, a framework set by government, by regulators, and we have several regulators, mm. including uh, audit regulators, yeah. if you like. I mean, to be which honest... Which puts a set of, set of requirements. However, right. let me finish my sentence. Sorry, go on. You are so right that the what the business of a bank is, is to lend you, me, and the and business world uh, the right amount of money at the right, right. price for a decent yes. period of time. And also, Full stop, and also don't take our savings and lend them to people who can't afford to pay you back, because oh. that's the other problem that they got involved in. But also, let's have a Bank of England uh, set up so that they know when the interest rates are going to need to be adjusted, rather than just sitting there blat you know, blamelessly staring off into space and making sure they've got gender-neutral toilets on the seventh floor, you know, when they didn't see any of it coming. And then, in fact, at one point, um, Bailey came out and said that the, the head of the governors of the Bank of England, uh, he couldn't do anything about inflation, which is literally his job. One of the, one of the things uh, I always feel not to be is the person in the spotlight yeah. <laughs> having the responsibility of dealing with situations when they really get tricky. Yeah. Now, I totally agree that stepping in early is better than sitting back yeah. and waiting. However, by uh, tackling inflation by interest rates, which is a time-honoured method. Mm. It's not necessarily the only method, but it's a time-honoured method, which we do here and is done in central banks around the world. Its effect, if it is going to be effective, it has to make people not want to spend, not be able to spend, their disposable income goes down and stuff gets more expensive. And the population really, really does not like that. Mm. It fails to see why it should feel the adverse consequences mm. of actions that have to be taken for not uh, the problem of today, but, well, the yes. problem of today, but well. the problem of the years ahead. And that, the fact that we have done what we've done in this country, which is supported wages, as well as being uh, harsh on interest rates, mm. what is happening here is that we will have interest rates higher for longer, and actually people's pay is caught up. The net effect, therefore, it's not quite zero, but it is not as strong as it should be. Mm. The country that took really strong action was the US because they don't... They, to say they ignore their citizens is unfair, but they don't have anything like the same sort of welfare state no. or mentality about right. protecting people. And that is a do. big problem. But Europe is in the same problem yeah. as us. Of course, say. because yeah. they follow the same dopey policy that comes out of the EU. But that's another story. Let's talk about Rishi Sunak, because he's been yeah. in power now for a year, which is hard to believe, to be honest. I mean, yeah. somebody told me that this week. I was like, really? Does it seem like a year? Um, what's your assessment of well, his financial stewarding yeah. of the economy? I mean, it, it feels like both longer than a year and shorter than mm. a year. What it doesn't feel like is a year. No. Um, what I think he's done is he has solved carefully, worked his way carefully through some of the really tricky problems and, and good on him. He's a clear problem solver. He comes with that sort of written on his back as uh, in all his life from school onwards. Mm. And I think he's shown it. If it. You know, it's been an improvement for the whole Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland trade, all that sort of messy bit. He's been brave in saying what? So many people have known for a long time, and that is um, the cost of HS2 is out of control. Yeah. And it's, you know, and out of control, sort of written glorious technicolours. Yeah. You don't have to... And he's going to throw a few hundred million at buses. Uh, well, if you live in the north of England, 
what you're concerned about is your local transport, both local trains, yes, local buses, the north of England. operating much better. Yeah, my and kids live in the south of England and they can't get more than one bus a day. To yeah, go to well, college. there you go, there you go. You know. you, you've, got, you've got another answer. So there's a lot of those things that I think he's done extremely well. He sits with a really, really difficult financial problem, though, and that is throughout the pandemic, of course, this country borrowed a lot of money yeah. to pay its people to stay at home, mm. fine, in order... That was also a good, it was a good idea of his to pay for all that. Well, well, it was Some collective idea. Don't think. He, he was He was the Chancellor at the time. If you recall, the pressure at the time was not, oh, don't do anything, just stay at home, don't get paid money. The pressure at the time was to hold economy as best you can. Mm. So what that has done is borrowed a lot of money added to our debt. The reality of today is that just as if we were people, we have got to pay back our debt. Yeah, but and he didn't ask us if we wanted to go into debt. That's the problem that a lot of people have. But a lot if he of people had, think you know, it's very unfair. If, if he had asked us at the time, do you want to be paid to stay at home, what do you think the answer would have been? Overwhelmingly, yes. Not necessarily. However, uh, I, I don't agree a, with you. This is for another time. And, and then there's this sort of little man truth which says, "Oh, just tax the rich and it'll be all right." And you no, know, I don't believe that either. We ha you're quite right not to believe it. They're taxed up. That's another reason already. why bankers' bonuses so, should be resolved and set and set because uh, they the more they get paid, the more tax they, they pay. They pay a lot of tax yeah. on them. But you know, as I do, that the reality of having proper discussion in the public domain almost doesn't take place. Yeah, you know, it does on led, this show. It's led by Twitter. It does on it does this on show. Does on this show. Oh, I say the things think. that people don't like saying, and sometimes people disagree, which is great. Andrew, yeah. we must have you back, but we've got to run. I've got to. I've got to get to, on to other matters. But I'm going to ask you one quick one. Okay. Um, marks out of ten then for Rishi's first year. Give him eight. Eight. Wow, yes. that is high. Absolutely. That is really high. I'm shocked. Absolutely shocked. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed.